JC, Happy New Year 2017. Can you believe it? I can't. But we're here, a new year, and I thought, man, what, what would be a cool song to play for my first video of 2017? How about The Shape of Things to Come, Max Frost and the Troopers? Uh, very cool song, very cool lyrics, and it goes right along with the new year and the future realities that are coming upon us. So. That's what's on the turntable now. Okay. I got a few things to show today. Uh, I picked up uh, mainly pop, 60s pop stuff. Uh, a lot of good bargains, uh, cheap stuff, uh, no high dollar. Uh, expensive stuff here. Although I did pick up one thing that was worth a lot of money and I didn't hardly pay anything for it, so that, that'll be coming along here shortly. But, uh, incidentally, I did pick this up. I got the single version of uh, The Shape of Things to Come. And uh, this is like a really different mono mix of it. And I tried to determine if it was an alternate take and I couldn't do that. But it is a, it is definitely um, a different mix. I like the stereo mix better. And then it's got a B-side that's not on the album, and it's called Free Lovin'. And that's sort of rock and soul. Uh, pretty good. I mean, there was enough enough room on the album they could have thrown that on the album too. But maybe they wanted to help promote the sales of the single. Okay, um, let's get going with uh, the second album by The Crying Chains. And uh, this is a stereo copy on the Red 2i 360 uh, Columbia label. This is mainly lightweight pop. It does have uh, a few rockers on it. Um, it has the outs. Uh, Standing uh, psych rock song, The Sailing Ship. That is now my favorite song by this band. Um, just killer. And then uh, Mr. Unreliable is really cool too. Um, the last song uh, on side two is a rocker too. But yeah. Not bad album, but it's just so sugary. Um, they just should have gone along with the more garagey psych vein instead of going to that sugar stuff. But still, uh, man, that one track, the sailing ship, awesome. Then I got the first Colors album, and this is on Dot, 1968. And this is a promotional copy, and uh, it's in mono. And uh, from what I understand, this album was not released commercially in mono. And uh, it's on the New Style Dot label. It is mono label. Uh, no, no promotional markings of any kind. Um, which is kind of weird. And also I found out that there are uh, mono pressings of this album that are on the earlier style God. This is the later style God. Um, good pop psych. A very uh, sort of uh, British, beatle orchestrated, uh, lavish, uh, music um not a whole lot of memorable songs but still solid quite good flows along nicely and uh this this band was out of california la area and a couple of songs they wrote every song on the album and there's a couple of songs that were covered by other bands uh notably um brother lou's love colony which was covered by the moon on their uh, first album and then Cataleptic which was uh, covered by, by a, uh, Aorta on their first album 
So, pretty cool uh, album and uh, not expensive, but some people love it, other people don't care for it. It just depends on what you like. I liked it, I thought it was very cool. Then I got the last uh, album by The Box Top, and it's still in the original shrink with the uh, pipe sticker. It does have a name written on the back, but it's on the shrink, so it's, it, it, it didn't go through to the cover. So this is just a really nice, clean copy of this album. I got it for five bucks. It's on the Bell label. So I listened to side one of this last night, and I thought it was really good. Uh, I still need to play side two, but... Uh, yeah, I liked what I heard on side one for sure. Then I upgraded my mono copy of the Holly Stop Stop Stop. My my earlier my other copy that I has it was a little shabby, but this is really nice and clean, and I got a good price on it. got a record label on it it's uh, I could probably remove it if I wanted to it was probably just uh, something you know, you would lick and then paste it on and so uh, this record belongs to so that's kind of cool This is another one that I got for five bucks. Uh, early Steppenwolf Live at the Matrix in San Francisco, 1967. And usually when you see this album, it's rough. I mean, I've had I've had this album before, you know, but uh, I finally I got a really nice copy of it. got some stuff that uh, I don't believe they actually did in the studio on it and uh, side two is all the pusher it's like uh, sort of a 15 minute free form psychedelic instrumental part and then they they go right into the pusher it, it's pretty cool and the, the sound quality is good for the, the era too. And uh, I saw John Kane Steppenwolf twice in the 80s. I believe I saw them in 80, I think it was 85 or 86. And then I saw them again in 87. So yeah, they, they put on a, a damn good show. John Kay, who was the only original. And then I picked up uh, some bubble gum out of a thrift store, and uh, I got the Archie. And this is their first album, 1968. And this one doesn't have Sugar Sugar. Sugar Sugar would come a little later in 69. I love that artwork. It's so cool. And it's on the orange... Uh, calendar label and it's rough of course you know it, it belonged to a kid but God, now I'm getting the craving for a piece of bubble gum up another copy of the mothers we're only in it for the money 
And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not like I've got enough copies already. I mean, so I thought, what the hell, I might as well just buy another one. <laughs> so I got four copies of it now. Uh, but this one, no, a couple of months ago I showed this one, and this is the uh, the, 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 the unsent, no, the censored, the censored copy. Okay. So I've been I've been doing a little more studying on this album. Um, there was actually when this album first came out, which is this copy. This is the first pressing. There were three songs that were censored on this copy, okay? And then a little bit later, unbeknownst to Frank Zappa, they went in and did five more censors. So this, this version's got eight total censors on it. And if you go online and you, you bring up the wiki for this album, uh, I believe it gives a little more information. I actually found a website too that went into extensive detail about all the differences and stuff on this album. But yeah, this is just a really nice, clean copy of this album. Nicer than the one that I got a couple of months ago. Uh, the cover doesn't have any ring wear right here, which my other one does. And uh, you can usually always tell the heavily censored version by the sticker on the cover. The very first uh, lightly censored copies won't have that. And uh, there's also a difference in the matrix uh, code. Uh, let me take a look here. Yeah, it'll have a REVF which is the first pressing. Okay, that would be the lightly censored version. And the heavily censored version, like this copy, will not have the F. It'll just have REV. So that's a good way to look without having to play it. Just look for REV without the F, and that will be the second heavier censored version. So, yeah, I was going through, I've really been studying this. Oh, let me get some more tunes on. All right, like what I was saying, I was doing a lot of investigative work uh, lately of all the different uh, censorships that went on with those songs. And I, I discovered on the very first version of this album, there's a line, oh, I've got it over here. There's a line on Concentration Moon that was completely cut off of the first version. And it's a spoken word part. And what was cut off of this version was also at the same time, I get to work with the Velvet Underground, which is as shitty as a group as Frank Zappa's group. Okay, that whole line was cut off of this version but for some reason on the heavily censored version set the second version that is on here except they cut out the shitty part so on this version of concentration moon it actually says also at the same time I get to work with the velvet underground which is Frank Zappa's group. So they totally changed the meaning of it. They cut out, the words that were actually cut out of this version were, which is as shitty a group as. So I found that pretty strange, but it's cool that at least they put the Velvet Underground line back on this album uh, even though it is censored and 
And uh, this is a, the German first pressing uh, copy of it, and I, I've shown this before. And this has a special flip back cover where you can you can bend it back and uh, have it like this. Now this is the way Frank Zappa originally intended "We're Only in the Money" to look, and uh, the record label wouldn't they wouldn't let him do it, so they had to reverse it. But I just noticed there is a, a new reissue of this album that just came out with the uh, art back, artwork is back the way it originally should have been. So uh, if you want it, you can get it that way. All right. Uh, I've been doing some more studying on my uh, Led Zeppelin uh, album that I got, uh, that I showed in my previous video. And a couple of EC members have helped me out on this, uh, Larry, and he just got one, um, just by luck, he got himself a copy of that. And uh, there was another VC member that uh, was a great help to me, and we exchange comments back and forth quite a bit. You could go back to my previous video and read all that if you want to. Um, I, I don't remember his uh, name offhand, I'm sorry, but uh, I'll put it on the screen. So, uh, yeah, it's just like from what we've discussed and everything and all my uh, investigation I've come to the conclusion that that is record club but it was not pressed at RCA um, I found out what all the the matrix code means there's a breakdown of it and I have it printed out in my previous video so you can go check that out where this was pressed it was pressed at uh, Presswell pressing plant in uh, New Jersey so I believe it was pressed by Presswell for RCA because um, it does have the RCA uh, run number of the like the 3S and the 4S is in the vinyl. I'm getting pretty geeky here, aren't I? This is nuts. But uh, anyway, I just. I wanted to show a couple of ACOs that I have, and I've determined that, I wasn't sure, but I have determined now that these are record clubs as well, with the black print on the uh, tan plum label. So, yeah, it kind of goes with the Atlantic. So, same style, sort of, huh? So these are a record club. And unlike this, this does not have a pressing plant code in the matrix number. So I'm thinking that this actually was pressed by RCA. So, yeah, I've got Disraeli gears on that um, style label, and I also have uh, the first Cream album on that same label design okay I guess that about does it um, I wanted to let everybody know that a while back I bought a uh, reissue on Sundays of the CA Quintet A Trip Through Hell it was brand new and I got it home and I put it on the turntable and the whole thing had crackly surface noise and I thought that was pretty unusual for a brand new record so I couldn't return it to the store because it was new so I contacted Sundays through their website and they said they would take it back and give me an exchange and blah 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 uh, no, of course they try and make it hard for me to do that. Oh, uh, you need uh, to print up, print
print up uh, a copy of this email and send it along with the record. It's like, well, thanks. Um, a lot of people don't have that luxury to do that, but luckily, where I work, I could do it. So, you know, I, I did what they requested, you know, I sent the album back with a hard copy of the email. Then she just writes me back the other day, our technician went through all of our available vinyl copies of that album, and every one of them is the same as yours, plays with crackly surface noise. So they had a bad run on those things. So if you're thinking about buying a copy somewhere, think, think again, because you might get stuck with a bad copy. I know Deadwax66 said he got a good copy. So there are good copies out there, but I didn't get one. So what I got to do now is they're make it even a little bit harder for me. She says, well, what we should do is we can send your album back to you or we'll give you credit for our website. But you need, you need to send us a receipt of what you paid for the album. Well, this was over a month ago. I didn't save the damn receipt. See, they're trying to make it hard. You know, they're not making it easy. So I went and talked to the owner of the record store where I bought it, and he said he would make me up a new receipt to send them. Um, so it's like, man, come on, people. I mean, it's obviously a bad pressing. You've proved it with the pressings you've got on hand. Just give me $25 credit or whatever and it just for my trouble and be done with it. But no, you know, that's the way these places are. All right, enough ranting, enough raving. We've been listening to a little of that crying shames, by the way, so. All right, BC, catch you next time.